So this is a centrifugal separator. Purification by rotation. Let's check it out. Centrifugal purifiers, a key element in the fuel oil treatment process. You'll find them on almost every ship. This is because fuel and oil have natural impurities that can damage our equipment, like the diesel generator engines and even the main engine. But before that, let's have a quick look at the fuel treatment process on board. The natural impurities in fuel and oil can be split in these two types. Solids such as cat fines, which are aluminium and silicon oxides that if left untreated can potentially damage fuel injection pumps or even the fuel injectors due to their abrasiveness. And then we have water, which left unchecked can cause problems in the combustion inside the engines, such as low combustion or even lack of combustion, or more seriously, damage to the fuel injector nozzles. Now the question, how exactly does fuel oil treatment work on board? Let's have a basic overview. On board, in the engine room, we have three types of fuel or oil tanks. First, we'll start with the storage tank, where we store the fuel oil the vessel will consume navigating. It's heated to a temperature slightly above the pour point to keep it fluid, and it depends on the type of fuel. In the case of heavy fuel oil, it can range between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. Then we have a transfer pump that sends the fuel oil from the storage tank to a settling tank. Now these tanks are the first part of our fuel treatment process. Here the fuel oil is heated to further increase the difference of density between the fluids inside mainly the fuel and water. Naturally, due to gravity, the water being heavier or more dense will separate to the bottom of the tank and the fuel oil being lighter or less dense will rise above the water. This water is later drained from the bottom of the tank by a drain valve, as you can see here. But there's a problem with this process. It's slow. There must be a way to amplify the effects of separation by using the difference in densities. And there comes the centrifugal separators. If you were to take this tank and rotate it at high speeds, we would have two new forces that are going to help us. These forces are called centrifugal and centripetal force. Centrifugal, which causes the higher density element to go towards the periphery or edges. And the centripetal, which causes the lighter element to go towards the center. This creates the characteristic interface separation we see in purifiers, where the heavy solid impurities are at the edge of the purifier, water being lighter than the solid but heavier than fuel oil in the middle, and finally purified fuel oil being the lightest in the center. So this purified fuel oil finally goes to our service tank or sometimes called daily tank, which is the fuel oil to be used in our diesel generators or main engine. Now, 
Let's look at the operation process of the Samgong Mitsubishi Self Ejector Centrifugal Separators. To begin, you start a purifier feed pump, either separate or directly connected to the purifier, in which you must also turn on the purifier, and have fuel circulating through heaters and back to the settling tank. This first process is to heat the fuel oil to an adequate temperature, ensuring a good separation within the purifier. However, make sure that the temperature is not so high. In this case, the water inside the fuel will begin to evaporate, and this will create difficulties in the centrifugal separation. Due to gases being lighter than liquid, and then the water particles will then stay in the purified fuel. To find out which is the ideal operating temperature, you should check the purifier manual and determine using the table shown the ideal temperature depending on the fuel oil. So once the temperature is correct, then we have to verify the rotation speed of the purifier. Here's a sneak peek of the bowl inside, so you can imagine. Inside this bowl is where the centrifugal separation will take place. And to begin it, we must have a stable RPM or revolutions per minute. We can determine a stable RPM by means of our electric motor amperage. As you can see from here, this type of purifier is coupled by an electric motor, horizontal shaft, a vertical shaft, and that is coupled to the bowl. Rotation is transferred from the electric motor to the bowl gradually by means of this friction pulley and friction Boston block mounted on the electric motor. As the motor rotates, the centrifugal force on the friction blocks make them move out from the boss, making contact to the friction pulley. The pulley then rotates gradually the horizontal shaft, which in turn rotates the vertical shaft and the bowl. After a brief waiting period, the RPMs will be stable and thus the load on the electric motor will also stabilize, showing a constant amperage. That's when we know the purifier is ready to begin fuel oil treatment. Before starting any equipment, ensure that everything's lined up correctly, verifying with the vessel's piping diagram. And after you confirm everything's lined up and the two key parameters, temperature and RPMs, are stable, then we can go to the main multi monitor panel and press auto start. The purifier will automatically test its main functions and flush itself. The main functions will go step by step, but to have an idea, here they are. These main functions affect the bowl in various ways. Closing, sealing, and discharging are all water connections to the bowl, connected by electric signals to solenoid valves, as you can see here. They do what their name implies. Closing water closes the bowl and allows the interface separation to occur. Sealing water at the start creates a water interface to prevent oil from exiting the heavy liquid exit of the bowl. And finally, discharge or opening water opens the discharge port of the bowl, allowing impurities to leave and go to the sludge tanks below. I'll explain how this happens soon. The feeding and circulating process refers to this pneumatic three-way valve. Like I said before, if the purifier is not receiving dirty oil, which is because it's either not been started or it's currently discharging, 
then it is circulated back to the settling tank. On the other hand, when the purifier is closed and operating, the fuel is being sent to the purifier to separate its impurities, and then the purified fuel will go to the previously mentioned service tank. Now that we understand the functions, let's see them in action. Remember, in the beginning, fuel is heated and circulating. The purifier is rotating at stable RPM, ready to receive the dirty fuel. We activate the auto start and let's verify what happens once again, step by step. To start, there's a flushing procedure before accepting dirty oil. First, closing water will be supplied to close the bowl and therefore seal the discharge port. Sealing water is then supplied, however, right now you can call this flushing or displacement water. Finally, the discharge or opening water is supplied to open the bowl and the discharge port is discovered, discharging all the flushing water. With this, a successful test of the main functions and a flushing was carried out. Then, once again, closing water is going to be supplied to close the bowl and its discharge port. After that, new sealing water will be supplied to create an interface separation and seal the heavy liquid outlet. And finally, the pneumatic three-way valve will switch to permit dirty oil to enter the purifier and finally begin centrifugal separation. Purified light oil will continuously leave through the light liquid outlet to our service tank and water separated from our fuel oil will continuously discharge through the heavy liquid outlet. This is until a set timer is activated. This timer will switch the pneumatic three-way valve back to recirculation and supply opening or discharge water to open the bowl and discharge all accumulated water and sludge to our sludge tank. After this, closing water is supplied and the cycle continues once again. A purifier is a high precision equipment with various pieces that allow all these main functions to work. I hope to explain these pieces in more detail in the future. However, if you'd like to see a more detailed explanation now, please refer to this video, which I'll credit in the description below. But at least with me, I hope you could see the big picture a little better. Finally, a key factor in purifier operation is the feed rate and back pressure of the outlet valve. We control feed rate by operating a bypass valve, usually before or after the heaters. The more this bypass valve is closed, the more dirty fuel enters the purifier, as you can see here. Likewise, the more we open this valve, the more fuel goes back to the settling tank, and therefore less to the purifier. Keep this in mind, as more fuel inside the purifier increases the pressure and feed rate, as shown on the local panel. Now let's look at the outlet valve of the purifier. The more we open it, the more fuel is supplied to our service tank. However, pressure inside the purifier drops. The more we close this valve, the more fuel is retained inside the purifier, improving separation, increasing pressure inside the bowl. However, it reduces the supply to the service tank. This final bit of information is key for purifier operation because this local monitor determines if there's a leak inside of the bowl by monitoring this internal pressure which is configured in the panel. 
Naturally, you should consult the manual to see the ideal working pressure of the purifier. And during operation, one can easily verify if it's functioning properly by this blinking light. This light, when correct pressure is achieved, will flash. However, should the light go out for an extended period of time, this will inform the multi-monitor that there's an abnormality. For example, a loss of pressure due to a leak in the purifier. This will stop the purifier automatically and sound an alarm. It's important to know this because when adjusting the feed rate, one may incorrectly operate those two previously mentioned valves. This creates an improper internal pressure inside the purifier, which may cause false leak alarms. So to recap, one must balance temperature, feed rate, and internal pressure of the purifier to ensure correct operation. So this video has gone long enough for now. I think the basics of purifiers and fuel treatment have been covered, but be assured, in the future, I'm motivated to show maintenance, troubleshooting, and as well as explaining how the internal parts all work so that the purifier can do its main functions properly. But for now, I hope the basic overview is clear. So, I hope to have correctly covered one of the most key jobs and machines in maritime engineering. But, as always, if you notice something or you feel like I missed something in the video, please write in the comment section below. Learning, studying, making mistakes, and learning from those mistakes are key aspects in any maritime engineer. And of course, the engine cadet. <laughs> and trust me, this is a process that never stops. In any case, as I grow, I hope to learn and do more and more jobs. But most importantly, I need to understand what exactly is going on at all times. Because understanding what you're doing and how everything is working is the best part of learning to be a maritime engineer. <laughs> And hopefully, I can share all of this little by little to you all. And in the best case, the future generation will be even better. <laughs> uh, success and nothing else, seafarer. Until next time. <laughs>